Iceland's former Prime Minister Geir Harde has been referred to a special court called Landsdomer in a move that could make him the first world leader to be charged in connection with the global financial crisis. A recent report commissioned by the parliament found that more should have been done to limit the damage from the collapse of Iceland's banks in 2008. The Landsdomer will now decide whether he should face trial for negligence. To find out how this development has been received, I spoke to Birgitta Jonsunder, a member for Icelandic Parliament for the People's Movement. People are happy about that somebody is being brought to court, but uh, however, the parliamentary committee that I was part of, that was supposed to be deciding if there was a legal base to call him to a special court. Uh, we had suggested that four ministers would be called for the special court, and we feel that this is probably the worst outcome only to have him called, not the other ministers. But it is still very important that the court will be brought together and that the parameter for the political elite is made clear that, you know, at some stage you are responsible. So how has the public uh, reacted to the fact that the other three ministers were not referred to the court? Well, what seems to be happening is that uh, this seems to be the drop that filled the cup of anger. So there is going to be massive protests today as the parliament will start a new session. There are about 1,500 people that uh, have said that they will be coming, which is a lot in Iceland. Uh, so we'll see what happens. This might be the beginning of the next revolution. Geir Harte has said that his official acts as prime minister didn't cause the banking collapse and that it wasn't in his power to prevent it. What are the main reasons that led parliament to decide to refer him to the special court? Even if he could not have prevented it with the information he had in 2008 and 2007, he could have uh, made the collapse a lot less severe by doing certain things like, for example, work uh, very specifically at uh, reducing the size of the banks. There was an offer to move the ISAVE accounts to a foreign branch or, or split the bank uh, Landsbanki into uh, two. So there would be a foreign branch in the UK and in Holland that would be separated from the Atlantic Bank. Plus, uh, it's important to bear in mind that uh, he used to be a finance minister before he was a prime minister and is the architect with the former prime minister Davy Otson of the system that uh, led to the collapse. The Landsdomer has never convened since it was set up in 1905 to try government ministers accused of crimes. Can this court convict and or dismiss the charges? Yes, it can either convict or dismiss. Uh, I, I think it is very important that this court is brought together to do a thorough research on what the minister did or did not. Uh, he is being charged for things that he did not do, including not calling together the government to go over the looming crisis. And so he is charged for negligence of executing his official duties. If Harde is convicted, what is he up against? It's actually really mild compared to the consequences of his lack of action. It's a maximum two-year sentence in prison, which is highly unlikely that he's going to be facing, because that would probably only be done in relation to treason, which he is not charged for. So I think the worst-case scenario for him is to have a, a fine brought upon him. Has a hearing date been set yet? Not yet. That is still in process. I do think that these information will be brought forward in, in the next first days of this parliament that is going to resume today. Harde has blamed the banks for misleading his government. What has happened with the special bank chief uh, that has been accused through a special investigation commission report of acting with gross negligence? Where does he stand? Well, that is very interesting. That is actually the former prime minister and uh, David Otson, who was the chief of the central bank. He actually got a job as the senior editor for what used to be the most respectable uh, newspaper in Iceland. Uh, however, by uh, deciding to hire him, hardly nobody reads this newspaper anymore. The law here is in such a way that after three years after you commit uh, any sort of crime as an uh, official, you can no longer be put on trial. So uh, many people feel that both Davy Otson and uh, another former minister and the chief of the Progressive Party, Halper Rasmussen, should be brought to trial as well. But uh, because
because of the way the law is constructed, it is impossible unless we would uh, change our constitution, which is uh, a complicated process. But uh, there is, seems to be a consensus within the parliament that the laws in regard to responsibilities of ministers need to be changed. Now, Brigitte, how is Iceland coping with its financial crisis? Oof, it is so bad. It is so bad because we are in the IMF program and they have banned the government to uh, stop the foreclosures that are looming. So just in this month, 1,000 homes are going to go under the hammer, meaning that and there's already been more than 1,000 uh, foreclosures this year. So 2,000 homes under the foreclosure hammer in this year, at least. And uh, this is a very small community. It's only 315,000 people living here. So people are very frightened and very angry. In many people's eyes, Iceland has set an example. What would it like to see happening in the rest of Europe? Well, I think it is very important that in the rest of Europe that uh, there will be a political reform in the sense that uh, people in general make themselves aware that the time of the left and right politics seems to be over and it is time that people have access to parliament, to decision making, either through being able to get into office or have laws that will allow them to call for national referendum on, on important issues, such as like when the IMF was brought to Greece, that uh, people could have voted on if they wanted to, I don't know. How is the media covering what is happening in the rest of Europe? Unfortunately, the media here in Iceland is quite weak because of the massive slashbacks on all institutes run by, for example, the government. Uh, so the budget now that is being presented uh, requires the national radio to slash down 10% again. So unfortunately, we are not getting enough information about what is going on in Europe. But uh, there is a growing sort of citizen awareness with those that have woken up to the reality that they have to uh, co-create their society. So people have started to look into other ways of finding news about what is going on in, in Europe and in other